presenting me on behalf of Medicine 5. Uh, stay. Mrs. S, a 46 year old lady who presented with complaints of generalized body pain for one and a half months and associated weakness of all four limbs for one and a half months. She had presented with uh, generalized body pain, which has started in insidiously one and a half months ago, which involved all four limbs, more at the thighs and the arms. There was no localized joint pains, paresthesias or shooting pain towards these limbs. And it had initially started over the lower limbs and over a uh, period of two weeks, it had, it had progressed over to the upper limbs also. The weakness, it had initially started over the lower limbs when she started having difficulty standing from sitting position, followed by lifting, uh, followed by involvement of upper limbs after two weeks when she had difficulty lifting her mug overhead while bathing and then difficulty bringing the food to her mouth. However, she did not have any difficulty mixing food. There is no history of any slippage of sandals. And she is also reported, reported to have difficulty on, in turning on the bed and uh, uh, sitting up from lying down also. There is no history of any exertional uh, symptoms, diurnal variation of symptoms. There is no history of any numbness or paresthesias, no history of tightness or fasciculations over the limbs. There is no history of any wastage of, wasting of the limbs. There is no history of any bowel or bladder incontinence, no history of any loss of weight or appetite. She had noticed weight gain over the past 45 days. However, there was no cold intolerance or constipation. And there is no history of any chronic cough or fever, no history of any mouth ulcers, photosensitivity, skin tightening, sicca symptoms or renal phenomenon. Treatment history, once she had started having the uh, pain, she had received out, uh, steroids outside. She had received Deflasacort 6mg for a period of around 40 days, which she was inconsistent, not uh, daily taking. Uh, however, her symptoms had partially improved. There is no history of any complementary medication intake either. On examination, she was conscious oriented. Her vital signs her pulse rate was 88 beats per minute, regular normal volume and character. Blood pressure was 110 by 80 millimeter mercury. Respiratory rate was 20 breaths per minute and she was afebrile. There was no characteristic rash or grotten spacules. She had mild hyperpigmentation over the forehead. On uh, CNS examination, her higher mental functions were normal. Cranial nerves were normal. Motor system examination, she had uh, decreased power at the shoulders in all four muscle groups. Elbow also, she had a power of only 4 by 5. Wrist and hand grip were 5 by 5 and good grand hand grip was present. Lower limb also at the hips and the knee, she had 4 by 5 power for all muscle groups. And at the ankle, it was 5 by 5 and excess halsis was uh, good bilaterally. There was no sensory loss and bilateral plantar reflexes and deep tender reflexes at biceps, triceps, supinator, knee and ankle were 2 plus bilaterally. She also had significant muscle tenderness over the thighs and the arms. Other system examination was normal and she did not have any significant findings. So summary, she is a 46-year-old uh, lady who had presented with complaints of insidious onset, gradually worsening, generalized weakness involving all four limbs where she had proximal uh, weakness more than distal weakness with no sensory symptoms, bowel bladder involvement and preserved reflexes. So, localizing the uh, deficit, this persistent weakness, she did not have any sensory or autonomic uh, involvement, hence the spinal cord was ruled out. She did not have any fatigability or fluctuation of symptoms over the day, so neuromuscular junction was ruled out. She did not have any cranial nerve involvement or other um, uh, nerve involvement with no radicular pain and reflexes were also preserved, hence nerve was also ruled out. She had symmetrical proximal more than distal uh, weakness, which fit. Uh, which fits into the uh, localization of the muscle. So the differentials considered for her was, the first differential considered was inflammatory myositis, which included dermatomyositis, polymyositis, immune-mediated necrotizing myositis, and antisynthetase syndrome. Uh, in view of her age, uh, a possibility of overlap syndrome or with myositis involved include uh, associated with SLE, rheumatoid arthritis, Sjogren syndrome, MCTD, systemic sclerosis was considered. However, she did not have any symptoms fitting into any of these uh, connective tissue disorders. Endocrine myopathies associated with thyroid as well as parathyroid disorders were considered. Cushing syndrome was considered. However, her or, uh, steroid intake was for after the onset of symptoms and she did not have any uh, uh, symptoms suggestive of Cushing's prior to the onset of muscle pain or weakness and toxin induced myopathy. However, she did not have any uh, 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 native medication intake or not statin uh, intake prior to this and this possibility of sarcoid also was considered. So, investigations, her hemoglobin was 10 grams per deciliter, total counts were 7,500 uh, per millimeter mercury, uh, per cubic millimeter. The differential count showed neutrophils of 71, lymphocytes of 60, 
and platelets are 188,000. Her renal function was normal with PRF of 0.47. Liver function showed elevated uh, liver enzymes 152 uh, AST, 124 ALT, which was considered secondary to the muscle injury uh, resulting in elevated liver enzymes. CPK also was elevated to 2,555 units per liter. Her calcium phosphorus were normal and an EMG done to uh, confirm the localization. There was a myopathic process pattern with positive sharp waves and fibrillary patterns. So coming to the etiological workup, uh, her th thyroid hormone level was normal. Uh, her ANE was found to be 2 plus speckled. Uh, further evaluation for an autoimmune disease had come negatively. Her cortisol levels were 12.3 and CRP levels were 16.8. A myositis profile was done, which had come positive for uh, anti me uh, antibodies. And a muscle biopsy was done from the Bialis anterior, which showed perifascicular atrophy. And uh, she had uh, minimal infiltrates with lymphocytes. There was no vasculitis or granulomatous pattern. So uh, I will be talking about approach to inflammatory myopathies today. Uh, the main inflammatory myopathies that we come across are dermatomyositis, polymyositis, necrotizing myositis, anti syndrome, and inclusion body myositis. Most of these are predominantly seen in the female gender group, except for necrotizing myositis where it is seen equally in both gender groups and inclusion body myositis which is seen more in males. Uh, and inclusion body uh, myositis is seen more in the elderly group. And the pattern is all, uh, always proximal more than distal. The only uh, pattern specific to a... a uh, particular myositis is when they have fingers and wrist flexor involvement and knee extensor involvement in inclusion body myositis. Lab values, most of them have elevated uh, creatinine kinase levels. In dermatomyositis and polymyositis, there is significant muscle involvement resulting in more than 50 times the uh, normal value of the lab. Uh, in necrotizing myositis and antisynthetase syndrome, it is more than 10 times the normal values and inclusion bo body myositis, it might be is elevated, however, less than 10 times the normal. It is also associated with multiple antibodies. Dermatomyositis is associated with uh, multiple specific antibodies, which include uh, the MDA, melanoma-derived de uh, antigen factor 5, TIF, uh, ME2, and uh, nuclear matrix protein 2 antibodies. Uh, polymyositis is usually uh, diagnosed with a biopsy, and they will have in increased CD4 involvement in the muscle. And uh, necrotizing myositis is associated with HMG CR antibodies and anti SRP antibodies. Particularly to be noted is that when they have statin use, uh, statin induced my uh, myopathy, HMG CR is the antibody that gets triggered. Antisynthetase is associated with antisynthetase uh, antibodies, which are directed against the tRNA uh, uh, synthet uh, synthetase and uh, uh, enzyme. But there are multiple uh, antibodies based on the protein. Uh, 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 amino acid uh, derivative of the uh, tRNA and inclusion by uh, body myositis is associated with C, uh, CN1A antibody and they have large granular lymphocytes on flow cytometry and they, they also have an elevated CD8 count compared to CD4 count. Uh, the muscle biopsy for a dermatomyositis is at the perimyceal and perivascular inflammation. Polymyositis is endomycial and perivascular inflammation. Necrotizing myositis will have necrotic features, necrotic um, uh, muscle fibers, and less of inflammatory infiltrates. And antisynthetase syndrome again will have perimycial and perivascular inflammation. However, they will show uh, fragmentation on alkaline phosphatase staining. Inclusion body myositis also show endomycial and perivascular inflammation. However, they are shown to have red ragged fibers also. And it is also uh, important to know the associated features along with these uh, myositis because uh, dermatomyositis very commonly is associated with a lot of malignancies and it is also associated with connective tissue disorders, ILD and myocarditis and vasculitis. Polymyositis is also associated with myocarditis in uh, interstitial lung disease and connective tissue disorders. Necrotizing uh, myositis, the particular thing to look for is use of statins prior to this. Antisynthetase uh, syndrome, we always look for mechanics hands, uh, non-erosive non arthritis and Raynaud's phenomenon and uh, interstitial lung disease. And inclusion by uh, body myositis, another possibility to think of is uh, malignancies like lymphomas, leukemias, as well as sarcoidosis. So, 
in our patient she did not have the characteristic uh, dermatological uh, uh, signs uh, associated with derm uh, dermatomyositis the primary initial uh, clue that we got from uh, for the diagnosis of dermatomyositis was with the antibodies that we got the probably her uh, dermatological uh, symptoms had been resolved with her steroid intake so the it is noted that uh, the her antibody was the anti me too antibody which is seen with the dermatological rash it is, should be noted that uh, the other antibodies that are seen with dermatomyositis such as tif1 uh, uh, nuclear uh, matrix protein are significantly associated with malignancy however our, the antibody positive in our patient is anti me too which is mostly a benign dermatomyositis the other antibodies i had described earlier were srp and hmgr which is seen in immune mediated necrotizing myopathy and uh, if they have severe uh, dysphagia and severe myopathy in those conditions mostly srp will become positive and when they have uh, other uh, uh, trna associated antibodies positive we have to look for ctd overlap also yes. so yes how many antibodies hmm. how many can be checked in a Our institute checks for TIF, M uh, MDA, NSP, and uh, uh, this ME too, sir. The other SRP and HMGCR for the immune mediated is also available. Uh, and the the anti anti synthetase antibodies, I'm not very sure which specific uh, amino acid one is available in our lab, sir. At least fifty percent of them. And she had a rash. She ha she had one rash which was over her forehead. She did not have the heliotropic rash. It, the rash was spe specifically sparing the periorbital area, and the, she had a hyperpigmentation over her forehead. She was not describing a rash which was there over her eyes previously. History, but she was not consistent with the rash. So, uh, for our patient, what I considered was uh, ra the rash probably resolving with the steroid intake, or probably she would have had some features which are suggestive of dermatomyositis previously, which had resolved with the deplasacot. And uh, even the biopsy had shown perivascular atrophy rather than infiltrates. The steroid would have caused the infiltrates to come down. So, th there are, however, uh, cases that come as dermatomyositis sign dermatitis. However, uh, and in those patients, the uh, specific antibody that comes positive is the NXP2 uh, um, uh, antibody. There were there was a 28 year old lady who had presented with proximal muscle weakness and dysphagia, uh, who had dermatomyositis sign dermatitis on the um, uh, biopsy as well as the uh, myositis profile. So our patient, she was a dermatomyositis with treatment modified loss of skin manifestations. A malignancy screen was done for her, and it was negative. And she has been started on steroids, one mg per kg, and she is to come for follow up in a week. Any questions or comments?